Hello, everyone, and thank you for joining me here today again at Underneath Her Skin. My name is Nicolyn, and I'm here today with another video. And today we're going to be talking about default parenting. And the topic of today's video is, are you the default parent? Now, before we continue, I would like for you to like, share, and subscribe to my channel if you have not done so before. On this channel, I talk, I talk about things that we go through in silence, family, and just lifestyle. So I decided to talk about this video because I'm realizing more and more, you know, that I am actually the default parent in my household. So the structure of my home is I am married, so my husband is here, I'm here, my, I have two daughters, a six-year-old and an almost five. She's gonna be five literally a week from today. So, um, you know, throughout time, you, you know, as a parent, you can realize like, you know, who shares what responsibility, who does what, but I think naturally speaking, a default parent can vary based on your the dynamics of your house. So if you are a single parent, um, automatically you are the default parent because, you know, unless you designate another person to share responsibilities, um, and I'm going to go into that a little bit further, automatically, unfortunately, you become the default parent. Um, and then we have other caregivers and guardians who are default parents. So default parenting basically is on the one person, mainly who is responsible for any school activities, doctor visits, you know, drop off pickups, um, anything that happens at school, you're the one they call, you know, all their teachers and different things alike, right? So that is the gist of the default parent. And while default parenting is not it's not entirely a negative thing. I don't want it to be seen as such. What we're going to be talking about today is identifying if you are the de default parent and also going through the different reasons as to why you, you become the default parent, whether it's automatically or whether or not it's really the kids who make you the default parent. Okay. So um, one of the things is I know for me, I when you're go when you're thinking about the default parenting um you automatically will know if it is you or if it's your spouse boyfriend caretaker whoever takes care of the kids with you you would know automatically who it is right based on the criteria that is set out so and it's not to say that you do every single thing for the kids all by yourself all the time but it's generally certain things that I've mentioned earlier that you do frequently that makes you the default parent, right? So, um, you know, as I said before, when the kids are off the school, anything school related, doctors, all of that stuff, you're the one who knows whether it's play dates, setting play dates, sleepovers, all of that good stuff. It is basically you're the default parent. So one of the things that um, I, I realize in my household is, um, that causes me to know that I am all, I'm the default parent is doing all of that, the school, the play dates, et cetera. Another thing that makes me realize that I am the default parent is constantly picking up after everyone, right? So, you know, my, as I said, I have younger kids, six and almost five. So they're always playing with their toys and things all over the place. So it's like, for me, as the woman of the house, wanted to make sure that, you know, the place looks somewhat okay, all, you know, it's going behind and picking up, saying, guys, clean up after yourself, all of this stuff. And I'm not saying that my husband doesn't, it's just maintaining the home is automatically, you know, I'm the default. And that's probably like, you know, one of the, the reasons. Um, so one of the things that, I'm gonna talk about two things that I realized that further makes me know that I am a default parent. So whenever nap time, one of the main things, and I'm not sure if this is because we birth them, we're more nurturing, um, and you know, maybe those qualities or characteristics of the female makes them gravitate to us more. But I, I know two things when it's nap time. 
So I can be in the kitchen doing something in the bathroom, in another room. It doesn't matter sometimes. Sometimes what my daughters will do is she would, you know, bypass daddy sometimes and they would come, mommy, I need to spend time with you. And sometimes that's her cue to say, I'm tired, I'm getting sleepy and I want you to sit next to me or I want to lay in your lap or something and get comfortable so that I can fall asleep. So that's one of the things that I notice as well. Um, and it doesn't happen all the time, but I realize that I don't know if they have certain times, but for the past several months, my daughters just gravitate to me to the point where sometimes I'm sitting on the sofa and I do not have arm space. I don't have leg space because my girls are like, legs are thrown, you know, over mine and I don't have that space. And I have to say, okay, guys, come on, I can't breathe. I need, I need some space, you know? You know, lay on the pillow next to me, you're fine. You're still close to me but you're not like so, you know, I don't know, too close that I can, I feel like I'm, I need space, right? The other thing is, if my daughters are having a night terror, a nightmare, having a bad dream, the first thing they're gonna say is, mama, they're calling me, right? And there are times when I said to, I, I'm, I'm, I'm laying in my bed, you know, I, automatically I'm jumping up, going to see what's wrong. And sometimes I wonder like, does my husband hear that? Like, am I the only one that, that heard that they're calling? Like, granted, it doesn't have to be where they're, they're you know, like, granted they said mama, but at the same time, it's like, I'm the one that gets up almost every, like 99% of the time every night and go to them, right? Um, so that makes me, that, that further makes me know that I am the default person. Another thing that I realize is you know, I can be in a completely different space and my girls would want something. And let's say they're in the living room, guys. And tell me if this has ever happened to any of you. Comment in the, in the the right in the comment section below. And let me know if you share this experience or something similar, right? So they can be in the living room and let's say I'm in the kitchen, I'm cleaning up or I'm doing the dishes, I'm doing something, maybe even just relaxing but they're in the kitchen they are next to daddy they will leave the living room to come and find me wherever i am to ask me a question i'm saying but um who's that sitting over there um who, who's that sitting directly across from you because i know you see daddy i said Daddy is right there, ask daddy for whatever it is that you need. And I find that I have been doing that a lot more because I'm realizing that just by nature, they automatically wants to come to me, right? And while I don't mind that guys, I have to be mindful about burnout. I have to be mindful that I don't get so overwhelmed. I love them, you know, with all my heart, but I have to also understand my limit to know that like, guys, really, I, I'm doing something right now and I would love to get this finished. Daddy is right there and he can answer whatever question, he can help you with whatever it is that you want, go to him. And that is why sometimes I feel like, you know, even though we have different tasks that we tend to, um, like, you know, because I'm closer to where we live, I work closer to where we live. So because of proximity to work and home, I take on more of the responsibilities when it comes to schooling and, you know, just things with that and their, their friends and, and all of that stuff. But I think when it comes to just being at home, they assign for themselves a default parent. And oftentimes it is the mamas. Oftentimes it is us who basically birthed them. And I don't know if that has some connection to the, the, the whole process of bonding or nurturing or what it is, but automatically moms are, are, are usually who are considered the default parents by default, you know, and by the kids choosing that as well. I don't know how they do it. Maybe it's just nature, but that's what happened. Um, so that is basically something that I wanted to share with you because I realized that 
honestly, guys, if if default parenting has to have limits, right? It has to have limits because, you know, you can really get burned out. You can really feel like this is just too much for you. And one of the things that I remember saying to my husband once, it's like, if you see that I am doing something and the girls are coming to me and you can assist, by all means, chime in and say, you know, come on or I would help you or let me help you with whatever it is that you need assistance with, because that is in turn helping me. You know, that is in turn helping me and vice versa. If I were to see that, that you know, you, you seem a little flustered, you're overwhelmed, you know, there is there is something that the kids want and you're not able to, to attend to them at the moment, I will step in. But being mindful that these are things that happen and, and, and just intervene in those moments to kind of ease it on the default parent, right? And that's basically what I have realized is the structure in my home in being the default parent. And it's not always pleasant. It's definitely good when you can share and bond with your children, but I'm just, I'm just mindful of when it gets to the point where you're just burnt out because it's too much. You're dealing with the home, you're dealing with laundry, you're dealing with school, you're dealing with friends, you're dealing with doctor's appointments. And you have other <laughs> areas of your life that you have to tend to, self-care. You have to make sure you get your self-care in because otherwise the roles and responsibilities of being a parent will drive you through the roof. And you have to be present and be your best self for these children so that, you know, they can see a good example of mommy and daddy and not, you know, and not feel like they're, they're, they're burdening you or anything like that. So definitely comment. Let me know if you feel like you are the default parent. I'm just going to encourage you guys, if you are the default parents, please stick in there. Share the responsibilities with if you have a partner, a spouse, um, or another family member who you are able to share responsibilities with, please do so that you do not become so overwhelmed with day-to-day -day responsibilities of taking care of your little ones. Because I am, as a parent, can understand that it can be very overwhelming. And that is also one of the reasons why I had, um, my, my girls have godparents because there are times when you need space, you need a break. You know, I firmly believe that it takes a village to raise a child. And growing up in Jamaica, I remember I had my aunt, my grandma, uncles, they were all in close, close proximity. So, you know, it made growing up a little easier on my mom, my dad, my sisters, and everybody like that, because we had an extended family close by where we can say X, Y, Z. Granted, living here now, I've been here since I was 12, it's mainly my husband and I, and that's why sometimes it can be a little bit much because we're both of us work full time and um, we get tired. We, we need time for ourselves as well, not just as parents, but as husband and wives. And that's just another discussion for a whole nother video. But, you know, these are things that when, once you identify it, definitely, definitely know. Seek help if it's becoming way too much for you. And if it means like just, you know, assigning task and responsibility to someone else, then do that. For parents who are not able to share responsibilities at home and you're just automatically the default parent, I would encourage you to limit as much as possible what you do in a day. Prioritize your daily list of activities and things to do so that you do not get burnout and you do not overwhelm yourself. You do not want to do that simply because if you're the default parent and you're the only parent, this, your child needs you to survive. Your child needs you to show up and be your best self as best as you can. So definitely try to just limit your day-to-day -day ins and outs and prioritize what needs to be done today or even right now. Because let's say for instance, it's dishes and it doesn't need to be done right now because you're overwhelmed. Leave the dishes be. They will take care of themselves, well, not necessarily take care of themselves, but you can do that at a, at a later time. All right. So I am hoping that you guys enjoy this video. I would definitely love to hear some ways that you are 
um, you deal with being the default parent at home, please comment below and let me know. I need some tips, guys. I need some tips. Um, how you share the responsibilities once you figure out that you're a default parent and let me know, all right? Have a great day, everyone. Thank you as always for joining me here at Underneath Her Skin and I will gl I'm glad to see you and I will definitely be glad to see you in another video. Take care, guys, and have a great day. Bye-bye.